Hello, everyone. Welcome to Predator's Papers. This is the 73rd discussion in this series, and it's titled Casting Out Demons. You can find this free, printable, two-page PDF at Predator'sPapers.com. The prevalence of demon possession in the Gospels is puzzling because of its complete absence in the Old Testament. Possessing demons was a common belief of the day and required exorcism to cast them out. Jesus did not dispute this folk belief, but simply demonstrated, with his divine power, that demons were of no account. We will seek to show that having a demon was a first-century label for maladies with often unusual behaviors and was not due to an infestation of demons in Palestine during Jesus' day. In the first century, all the influencing nations of Judea were polytheistic, and the belief in demons had become commonplace for first century Jews. However, John's Gospel, which perhaps articulates the most theological expression of Jesus' ministry, does not contain instances of Jesus casting out demons. It's important to note that Jesus referred to Beelzebul, the god Mammon, and demons at various times, but such naming does not affirm their reality. Take a look at number one for the definitions of polytheism and monotheism. Polytheism is a belief in many gods and is characteristic of pagan religions. Monotheism is a belief in a single god and is put forth by the Bible. In monotheism, one may speak of other gods, but they do not exist except in the human imagination. And number two, these references show that the Old Testament teaches that demons are pagan gods and therefore do not exist. Number three, Paul reiterated the same idea. Demons, which are thought to be gods, do not exist and believers should have nothing to do with these inventions. And number four, we learn that what was called sickness in Isaiah was called possessed with demons in Matthew's gospel. This kind of equivalence should not be glossed over because it gives us a glimpse into the vernacular of the first century. In number five, over and over again, the Bible states Yahweh is the only God. Quote, Yahweh is God, and there is none else besides him. I am Yahweh, and there is none else. Besides me, there is no God. And so on. The Bible lets us know, in no uncertain terms, there is only one God. Some argue that because the Bible sometimes states Yahweh is greater than all the other gods, this implies there are other deities. People steeped in polytheism do not give up their beliefs easily. A step toward truth is to affirm Yahweh is the greatest of all the gods. In Acts 17, observing the array of idols in Athens, Paul didn't tell the Athenians all their gods were foolish. He kindly and simply took them a step toward truth. He told them he knew who their unknown God was, the very creator of all things. In 6, 7, 8, and 9, we look at the two most detailed demon possessions passages which appear in all three synoptic gospels, the boy with convulsions and the man living among the tombs. We also add a much less detailed incident, the man in the synagogue with an unclean spirit found in two gospels. The boy with seizures is a textbook case of someone with serious epilepsy. Falling into the fire and water may seem unusual until one realizes that fires for cooking and keeping warm were commonplace in that day. Open sources of water were also commonplace. The child was suffering from a disease and at risk in his everyday environment. The man who lived among the tombs was also a desperate case. It appears his mental disintegration was made even worse because he was treated cruelly in the attempt to contain his behavior. There is a history of mistreatment of the mentally ill even to our present day. We don't know if he was living among the tombs to escape abuse, but whatever the circumstance, he was in despair and driven to harm himself. When Jesus approached, the man was afraid he would hurt him like others had done. Leave me alone, he pleaded. I beg you, do not torment me. All we know of the third case, the man in the synagogue, is that he was unclean, perhaps due to erratic behavior and convulsions. He also had apparently been mistreated for his condition because he had the same reaction as the man among the tombs. 
Using the language of possession, he cried out, Have you come to destroy us? Leave us alone. We should notice that none of these cases involve the possessed person having paranormal powers like is depicted in movies. They were hapless, suffering individuals in need of relief. We also must notice that believing in the power of Jesus was the key element in their healing. Some claim that Christians who don't believe in the traditional view of demons Satan and fallen angels do not have a supernatural world view. This is specious and perhaps even manipulative. Anyone who believes in God has a supernatural world view. Paganism, the belief in many powers, is the default mindset of the natural man. Yahweh chose Israel to teach mankind the truth of one God, but they lapsed incessantly into polytheism. Is the goal of sanctification perfect? monotheism? Is this why Paul could say, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God for you? And also, all things work together for good for those who love God? For more thorough treatment of demons, please see Duncan Hester's The Real Devil, Chapter 4. But don't believe us or anyone else. Rather, prove all things, asking for wisdom from our Heavenly Father.